space like you need to assemble Legos, plastic Legos. We have Vex Robotics where you need to assemble something more or less like the, um, the Lego Mindstone, which is plastics, but this time around it's metals. Hello and welcome to yet another exciting edition of Best Tech on Ghana Web TV with me, Maoli Aholimega. On this week's episode, we'll be delving into the automation of objects with my guest here, Eugene Moyan from the IoT Hub. Eugene, how are you? I'm Good to see well, you again. Same here. The last time you came here, I had to learn a lot of things from you. We discussed about miniature objects. Mm -hmm. Today, we're going to be looking into the automation of objects. Yeah. So basically, you have a STEM aid kit. Yeah. So tell us exactly what the whole idea of this kit that's All right. So when it comes to STEM, it's something that is trending in our country, Ghana, at the moment. So mm. speaking about STEM, S stands for science, the T stands for technology, E for engineering and mathematics. But of labor, look at something, art has been added to it. Mm. That has to do with um, making things nicer. So assuming I invent a phone and then maybe I use cardboard for it, no one's going to purchase it because of the art behind. So we need to use something that's quite lucrative and then attractive. So that when people buy, at least they can get some motivation about the art side. That's why we added ads. So now it is. It's a STEM education, not STEM education. Mm. We also have the STEM aid kit here. So the STEM aid means the STEM that I explained earlier on. The A for art, I for um, uh, that's innovation, D okay. for design, and the E for engineering. Oh, so so basically, you added aid to the STEM already. Yes. And you know, aid oh. to has some kind of impression. Aid. So it's here to aid people, to help people. Okay. Yeah. So what are some of the raw materials that? Um, are contained inside this kit so we have um educational tools that has to help students with basic electronics so we have sensors those are um, input devices we have output devices so when you take this you can create a couple of projects starting from the prototyping stage okay yeah yeah so take us through all the that salient step from the prototype to the final point all right sure so when it comes to our street here in ghana we have street lights available right mm. and then some of the street lights they are automated okay so at night you tend to see that oh maybe around 6 p.m the light just goes off by itself that is automation mm. and it has to do with certain sensors um we have one called the ldr okay the light dependent register i think i don't have that one here okay that one has to do with darkness okay so you program it in such a way that whenever there is darkness then it turns on the light so looking at the ones on our streets that's one thing you can use this kit for we also have the street lights over here where you can program this mm -hmm. to obey certain things according to how you want it to work so um Basically, this helps the kids to understand this is how the traffic light is being programmed mm. to help. And we use the C++ language, which is a programming language. Yeah. 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 So, notably, this is used mostly in, um, in schools, right? Yes. Yeah, so, from your point of view and with the work that you've been doing for some time now, how have they been receiving this whole innovation? Okay, so this is like a revolution mm. and it keeps increasing every time. So, looking at the percentages now, um, it's already in the senior high schools, junior high schools, even the universities are adapting to this. Okay. So it's like it's having a major impact and then people are correlating with this. Mm. So we've, we've already seen the emergence of AI. The last time we spoke about AI and mm -hmm. how it wants to take people's jobs and all of that. <laughs> um, I'm sure AI comes into this fold with this yeah. automation as well. Yeah. So how are the students also, you know, receiving the AI and all of that? Is, you know, it, is, it, is it part of their curriculum or... The STEM aid kit adds that, that bit to it. So we have other sections of robotics. Okay. So we have this. The STEM aid takes it from the angle of Arduino. So Arduino, Arduino. is like a version. Yeah. Okay. We also have Lego Mindstorm, where it's like you need to assemble Legos, plastic Legos. We have Vex Robotics, where you need to assemble something more or less like the um, the Lego Mindstorm, which is plastics, but this time around it's metals that okay. you need to assemble. But we are doing with the Arduino. So the Arduino has an advantage over the others because it's, it's costless and then it has let's say, a wider range of um, you being able to manipulate that into a real life. You can solve real life problems with the Arduino. Mm -hmm. But looking at the Lego, it's just limited. And there are certain things you can do with a, a Lego Mindstorm and then the other form of robotics. Okay. So before we come to the demonstration properly, um, just give us a brief on where you see STEM and, and with this STEM aid, how far do you think this can go, especially in our in our senior high schools and in our universities as well. All right, so this can go as far as um, all the STEM related jobs can go. So looking at the modern days, we have um, doctors in the system, 
the last time I came here, I spoke about um, we having a robot that can perform surgeries and any other things. Yes, you mentioned. So these have to do with the things in this kit. So as a human being, we have some like motors in our systems. Your hand has motors. Those are output devices. We have something here called a servo motor that can help robots to move just like the same way your neck, the way your neck moves. Okay. So this one can move 180 degrees. So with this in our educational system, it's going to push the students ahead and challenge them to do certain things in the field of science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Mm. So before we go on a break and then we'll, we'll, we'll get into the demonstration proper, right. um, how effective is this and should should we rely on these machines every single time? Because, you know, there's always the argument that, I mean, the machines can't always do all the job. Human mm -hmm. beings have to be behind the machines and yeah. then program them. All right. So when it comes to this, I would say in the sense of coding, it is, you can trust it 100% because mm. it's all about code. Whatever you tell the machine to do, that's what it does. But in the sense of kinematics where there's motion, friction and then other things can cause the wear and tear of the machines. Mm. So that can become a problem in the sector of the STEM education. So I don't think we should trust it that much. It should be like 80-20. Okay. Yeah. yeah, so Eugene, we'll go on a break and then we'll come and learn how to program the machine proper and then we'll see how it will interact with us. Sure. I've been speaking with Eugene Moyan and he's a robotics engineer with the IoT Hub and we've been learning about how to automate objects and bring them to life. Don't go anywhere, we'll be right back. Hello and welcome back from that break on BizTech. I've been speaking with Eugene Moyan from the IoT Hub and he's also a robotics engineer. And we've been learning about the STEM aid kit, which is assisting many young people, especially to be able to automate objects and then bring them back to life. Eugene, I've been learning quite a lot from you. You always have some very interesting things to share with us. Thank yeah, so you. before we go into the demonstration, I would like you to just take us through some of the items that we see here. I see all kinds of cables and red and blue. Yeah. Yeah, so just briefly take us through that. All right, so I'll start with um, positive and negative. Since okay. in our society, we have positive and the negative stars. Mm. Um, when it comes to electronics, we have positive and negative. So positive has to do with the positive, um, the protons, and the negative has to do with electrons. Okay. That's the kind of charges that flow through the battery. Okay. So those are the forms that power every cable. Okay. Looking so can, at, I, can I take one? Sure, you can. Okay, all right. So when it comes to the Arduino, we have color coding. Okay. Color coding. So with this, you can see brown here. Brown stands for ground. Okay. So the short form is G and D. The reason G &D. why yes. Okay. The reason why it is ground or the color is brown is because the follow the, the, the color of our flow is um that's brown. Mm. And we have lumi soil that is black. Okay. We also have blue representing negative. Also oh, there there's some earth element to exactly. it as well. We have um red standing for positive. Mm. And then the orange one here has to do with signal. Okay. Yeah. But I'd like to explain this one too. Okay. So yeah. these are the wires that we use in making connections. They are called jumper wires. And then we have types. So okay. looking at this, we have pins at the end, mm. starting from here to the other side. So this one, we call it male to male jumper wire. Okay. Is there a reason why the one I'm holding has, has a box and then this one yes. has... Okay. So the one with the box or with no pin there, that mm. is nigga M, the female. Okay. So you can call this male to female. <laughs> Interesting name. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that's the main concept behind the okay. jumper wires. We have LEDs, light emitting diode. Okay. So yeah. this can be used for basic projects like design, the um, the streets, lights, and then the other things. Mm. Now, what else do we have again? The motion sensor. Okay. So this is basically for motion, just like the name. Goes. So this is when your your body, the movement, like your body accepts it, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. And then what else do we have? I think I spoke about the servo motor earlier on, but I'd like to touch on it again. Okay, yeah, please so do. So with this, um, there's, there's this Vodafone advert where the kid made a door, a smart door for his mom who was in a wheelchair, mm. and they were able to control the door with a phone. They use this motor called a servo motor. Okay. The normal motors in our rooms can move, let's say, in air conditions and air fans, can move 360 degrees. But okay. this one moves only up to 180 degrees. So it's a shorter... Yeah. Mm. So you can use this in creating smart doors, smart dustbins, and a whole lot of projects. But can you increase this from 180 to 360? No. 
Okay, so you need a, a much bigger yes. one. Yes, but there okay. is a technical side where you can open this and then fix it to turn 180, okay. 360 degrees. All right. Yeah. Okay, so just finally, before we go into the okay. demonstration, what, what, what are some of the raw materials that I use to make these? I mean, I'm sure somebody's making these. Are you mm -hmm. making them yourself or it no, comes with a kit? It comes with a kit. Okay, yeah. all right. So what are some of the raw materials? I know I see plastic and cables and mm -hmm. all of that. Are they sourced locally here? No, they are not sourced locally here. But mm. we can start if you want to because some of them, looking at this like this, this is wood. Mm. You can use wood in making this. Okay. Yeah, so that's the basic thing. We have woods and some natural resources here that we can use in making okay. things like this. Yeah, I was asking because in, particularly in the schools, you know, mm -hmm. sometimes they may not have all the raw materials yeah. and that may, you know, hamper on their progress and mm -hmm. all. Yeah, so now let's get into it. Yeah, you have a lot of things to show yeah. us some coding and then some other stuff. Okay. But before we go, what am I looking at right, right here? Okay. So this is a basic circuit that I have built. A basic circuit? Yeah. Okay. Looking at this, this is called the Arduino board. Arduino board. Yes. So okay. this is the brain. Looking mm. at every human being, the main reason why we're able to work or act by ourselves is because we have a brain, right? Mm. So robots need brain to, before they can automate or they can work by themselves. So this is the brain of the system I've created right now. I've inputted a code so that it obeys um, whatever that you exactly so to when do. i put my hand there it should sense within a certain details that my hand is there so it should turn on the light over here okay so this is the ultrasonic sensor it's basically using detecting obstacles so when obstacles I, yes <laughs> so i should have put my hand there my hand becomes an obstacle okay. this can be used for security systems where when someone approaches your house it just beeps or something is that the same thing that people use for the um the be the doorbells and the cameras, you know, the ring guy and all those. So other we stuff. have an uh, updated version okay. of that one. Yeah. Okay. All right. So you can also not just robots, you can use it for your own security yes. as well. Yes. Okay. I would even try that over here. Okay. So assuming you're in your room and then someone approaches your house and this is the person approaching. You oh, see, the light is I on. Approach within a certain meters, the light came it will be, on. So that's a signal it, it gives back yes. to the person. Exactly. Okay. So you just come close. Okay. Can I try it? Sure. Okay, all right. But how come it's it's so? Is it accept everyone else or specific people? Everyone else, because okay. I said it detects obstacles. So far as the thing is an obstacle, then it triggers the sensor. Hmm. So all sometimes right. you approach certain doors and then the door just open by itself. It yeah. could be the use of the motion sensor or the ultrasonic sensor. Yeah, like the one we have at the big yeah. buildings and yeah. stuff. I would like okay. to test with this. This okay. is for the buzzer. The it makes a sound when you connect electrical signals to it. Okay. So I'm going to test it with the same system. Sure. So I see everything is happening on this board. Yes. Okay. So this is called the breadboard. Breadboard. Yes. Mm. So I don't know what came into the scientist whoever made this. He <laughs> went into the kitchen and then got um, the breadboard. You know, the ladies, they have this kind of board in creating food when they are making food. We have the chopping board and the other things. But he chose the breadboard. I don't know why he chose that though. <laughs> then he inserted nails into it. We'll have it. to find out from him exactly. why, why he decided to do that. But he anyway. inserted nails into it and then connected a couple of wires around. So whenever he makes a mistake, he's able to uncoil it again. Oh, so okay. the purpose of this is to prevent um, you soldering and then making a mistake. Okay. Just imagine this. This was done with soldering. So when you look at the back side, you can see some metal. Yeah, the metal. Yeah. This is soldering. So just okay. imagine you are done doing this and you realize you made a mistake. Mm. So this is here to make works easier and then to, to and then to correct it as exactly. well. Exactly. Okay. So now I'm done connecting my buzzer and we're going to test the okay. distance. All right. Okay. We hear the beep. Can I try it? Sure. Yeah. It's a loud sound too as well. Exactly. Wow. So according to my code, so I use my laptop as a screen okay. where I made a, a code in the sense that any time... Okay. Let's have a look at the coding yeah. as well. Any time it comes on, it's going to type maybe LED or sound or whatever is on. Okay. So now you can see initially I use the light, so it's using the light. So light off. But mm -hmm. when I bring it closer, you see lights on oh, okay. over there. So you can command it with a C++ yes. to accept on or off. Exactly. Okay, or stop or pause or yeah, so whatever. Depending on how you program it to. Okay, well, interesting. So just quickly take us through, how long did it take you for you to come up with this code? And how, how did, the, how did the, the board receive the coding as well? Okay, so with the coding aspect, it took um, less than 10 minutes. As I came here, then I started with a code. It took less than 10 minutes. Uploading 
so within few seconds it was done mm. yeah wow so finally we're wrapping up um okay. what are some of the benefits i know you use this for the robots but how far can this go in terms of you know manufacturing and production and all of that apart from the robots are there other things oh, yeah. this, this automation and stem aid kits can do yeah mm -hmm. so i made mention of the street lights you know in ghana here we have um traffic issues mm. so with this if you're able to automate things like this mm. the, the street light like this using the ultrasonic sensor you know sometimes you get to certain junctions and then it's like there's no car there but the traffic light is red and there are car there's a certain car standing there waiting so you can use this ultrasonic sensor to detect whether there are cars there or not to mm. allow the other car who is free to pass okay so that's how far it could go in terms of the stem education mm. and you're sure this is not going to take anyone's job like the ai we spoke about the last time <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, Eugene, it's been a very interesting conversation with you. It's always nice to have you around and Same you share way. some of your um, your stuff with us. Sure. I've been speaking with Eugene Moyan from the IoT Hub, and he's been my guest on this week's edition of BizTech. We've been talking and learning about how to automate through the support of a STEM aid kit. He's been my guest on this week's edition. Before we go, don't forget to log on to our website, www ghanaweb.com. Don't forget to follow us on all our social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And also subscribe to our YouTube channel, Ghana Web TV. My name is Maori Ahonimega. Please do stay for Biz Headlines.